Hello friends, if you want to learn NCIT science book, you are at the right place. I am Rajpal Singh and you are watching Khwabida Educational. Please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon if you like my video. Let's learn science. Welcome to the chapter number 5, the fundamental unit of life from NCRT 9th standard science book. The whole chapter is divided into two parts. The first part is smaller which is what are the living organism made up of and the second part is what is the cell made up of. So in the first part may that be plant, may that be an animal, what are they made up of? What is the basic unit? By repeating that unit, they are made up of. All of you know that in the second part, we are going to discuss about the cell. What do we call the boundary of the cell? Where is the boundary of the cell? And is that cell wall or cell membrane? Then we are going to discuss what is the center part of the cell. We call that nucleus, how it controls the cell, what are its functions. Then we are going to learn about the cytoplasm and then the next part is cell organelles. So in cell organelles is some bigger part in that we are going to learn what are organelles in the cell. As you know that if any organization is there and there are small small components and they coordinate and perform the function of the organization. So in the same way uh, we are going to learn what are the small particles this is the first paragraph of the chapter and it is all about the discovery of the cell. So there was a scientist Robert Hooke. He observed the bark of a tree, we call it cork and he observed it under his self-designed microscope like this. So what he found was a structure like this. After observing this structure, it looked like the same of the apartment and in Latin language, an apartment means a cell and from that the term cell was given. So this is all about the discovery of the cell. So from here, we can answer one in text question, who discovered cells and how? So who discovered cell? Robert Hooke and how? with the help of his self-designed microscope and observation of cork under his self-designed microscope, he observed the cells. Now, let's perform activity 5.1. Now, this is how to prepare temporary amount of onion peel. For this, you need saffronin, needle, forceps, a slide, and cover slip and these are the watch glass. I have filled with water so there is a little modification from the book. So uh, we also need the onions. So the first uh, step is to take out the onion peel from the concave side. So this internal part is the concave side. This internal part is concave side. This is convex side. This part is concave side. So from this we have to take the onion peel. So there is one trick. You just you just do like this. Hold it. Hold it and just take it. So this is the onion peel. One way is of doing this. We will do with the another one. You just fold it and remove this part. Again you can see there is onion peel. Just take it and immediately place this in the water in the water so that it does not dries out it does not dries out so now next is the book says you have to put water on the glass but this is a little modification from this this is our onion peel so I'll just add a little of saffronin in this watch glass. 
okay saffronin is added now you can do you can transfer this onion peel now to this slide okay book says to put this saffronin on the slide but uh, there is a little modification and the camel hair paint brush can also be used for this purpose after a short while you just transfer this layer to this one and after that you have to put one drop of water on the slide so this way you can you can take the drop dropper also and put this way also now you have to spread this slide on this one so your slide is complete add some more water on it and now the time is to place the cover slip this is our cover slip hold like this one you hold like this and place needle here and with the help of needle you slowly from one side press it here so all the air bubbles are out like this now your slide is ready to absorb under the microscope compound microscope this is the ready slide when you observe your temporary onion peel mount or slide under the microscope you see this structure and the next question in your book is what are these structures as you know that these are the cells so you have observed the cells of the onion peel you in the same way you can prepare a temporary slide of the human cheek cells and this is what you see in that after robert hook and tony von leeuwenhoek in 1674 took some water from the common pond and observed under a little advanced microscope and he observed the one cell organisms so from there it was clear that it need not to be too much of cells or multicellular organism always there are smaller organism which are made up of one cells so from here we can also answer one more question as what are unicellular and multicellular organisms so all the organisms which are made of one cell as amoeba paramecium chlamydomonas these are called unicellular organisms and all the organisms which are made up of more cells we call them multicellular organisms and the example is human monkey camel any example or any animal you can give So here is a sequence of events which is summarized in the yellow box more to know. The first point is Robert Hooke in 1665 discovered the cell from the cork and in 1674 Leeuwenhoek observed that free living cells or the organism made up of only one cell are also there and in 1831 Robert Brown discovered the nucleus nucleus is the center part of the cell which control all the activities of the cell and in 1839 Purkinje saw that from the boundary of the cell to the inward there is a fluid substance and he given the name protoplasm to that and after that in, there were two scientists biologists Sheldon and Schwann in 1839 and 18 38 they simultaneously proposed the cell theory what cell theory says all the plants and all the animals or all the organisms are made up of cells may that be unicellular or made up of one cell or multicellular or made up of more number of cells then this cell theory in 1855 was expanded by virchow and he said that all the cells arise from the pre existing cells which means the new cells will be formed from the old cells there is a no cell which arises from nowhere 
all the cells will be made from the pre-existing cells. They divide and make the new cells. See this activity 5.2 and what it says. As you have made the slide, temporary slide of the onion peel, now you can also make the slides of the leaves, slides of the root and root tips also. After observing all these cells, you know that there are not one kind of cells. They are all different. So in activity 5.2, we have to answer some questions. And the first question is, do all cells look alike in terms of shape and size? So answer is no. They cannot look alike. See these all cells. Observe the nerve cell. It is a lengthy cell. And you can also see there are some receptors attached to it because it has to make a nerve impulse or receive the message or transfer the message. So it's a long cell. Observe the blood cells. These have different shape because they have to flow from the, uh, they have to flow in the vessels. Observe the sperm cell. It has a tail because it has to swim. So all the cells, they don't have the same shape and size. These all uh, shape and size depend on the function they perform. According to the function their shape and size are decided. So the next question is, do all cells look alike in structure? There is a basic structure which is same, but outer structure is not, as you have observed, is not same for all the cells. The next question is, could we find difference among cells from different parts of the plant body? Yes, we can find the difference. As leaf have to perform photosynthesis, it will have different kind of cells. Root has to go inside in the soil, so it will have different kind of cells. Uh, stem has to transport uh, wa um, that uh, water and food, so it will have the different kind of cells. So in this way, all pa the organism also does not have the same kind of cells. They have different type of tissues and in different type of tissues, different type of cells are there. What similarities could we find? So there are some basic similarities as all the cells have boundary. We can either call them cell wall or cell membrane. They will have the nucleus. Some of the cells are, uh, they are not having the well-defined nucleus, but they have rudimentary nucleus. All the cell will have uh, some basic cell organelles. So some basic parts are same, but not all the cells are same. If we talk about human body, it has different kind of cells in different kind of organs. And as we uh, take the food digestion begins, so in the intestine, there are different kind of cells. We have to see in eyes, there are different kind of cells and we, listen we respond to external stimuli so there are nerve cells so uh, basically the cells are of different types but there is also one point to notice that in all these uh, type of cells there is some basic features which are always present like cell organelles most of the cell organelles are present because there is some basic functions of all the life which are performed by these cells so here is the next question from your NCRT in text question, they are made up of cells. So cell, if they are made up of cells, so cell is the structural unit of life. It makes their structure. And what is why is why is it called as functional unit of life? Because all the basic functions of the life are performed by the cells. That's why they are called functional unit of life.